hi everyone i'm going to talk about mechanism of normal labor today mechanism of labor is defined as a series of movements that occur at the fetal head while it is passing through the birth canal now the mechanism of labor for us mba students is asked in vivas where you're supposed to demonstrate it on a pelvis and um, it's called a dummy pelvis and a baby i do have a video which i'll be showing but the quality is really poor so you'll have to bear with me okay the things you need to know prior to the mechanism of labor is the position um the position is the relation of the denominator uh, to the different quadrants of the pelvis now uh, what is the denominator um it is an arbitrary bony point um fixed point on the presenting part and the presenting part is actually defined as um the part of presentation that overlies the internal os so um this is a diagram of the maternal pelvis uh, this is the sacrum and uh, this is the pubis and you divide it basically into eight quadrants and depending on where the head is you uh describe the quadrants for example in an um occiput um presentation suppose my head is over here so i'll call it left occipital um transverse position so basically there is anterior and posterior and um there are two transverse and you can call it either right or left the both like mirror images of each other and then there is right occipital posterior right occipital anterior and stuff like that now i'm going to show you a video on the dummy pelvis um okay so as you can see the video quality is really bad and my college pelvis is actually brown in color and i don't really have a pelvis and a dummy doll at home so i'm i apologize i cannot um you have to do with that and i ho really hope it helps um so these are the steps in normal labor uh, engagement is when the uh, greatest diameter of the presenting part passes through the pelvic inlet and i have actually made a video on it before so i'll leave the link in the description below and you can watch it i include a uh, syncretism and a uh, syncretism in the video as well uh then descent and flexion is actually a continuous process uh, during labor and once after engagement there comes something known as internal rotation of the head and uh, imagine this is the fetal head in the uh, left occipital transverse position and we have to bring the occiput from the left occipital transverse position behind the pubic os so even when you are doing it with a dummy pelvis make sure that you know whatever position your baby's head is make sure the occiput comes behind the pubic arch in um normal presentations okay so you will have to rotate the baby's head through 2/8 of a circle circle this is a circle imagine it's a circle with eight parts right so you have to move 1/8 and 2/8 understood so um you know the baby's neck is not really uh, something um very uh, mobile so you know the, it can't stand that much torsion you know it can't twist so much so what will happen is internal rotation first occurs through 1/8 of a circle and then for the next 1/8 to occur the shoulders also move with it so when internal rotation is actually completed from the left occipital transverse position to the pubic arch 
there's one eighth portion of the head alone and then the another one eighth is through the one eighth rotation of the shoulder now imagine if this is your baby so this will be the shoulder right and will end up in the uh, oblique diameter of the pelvis um, I'll show this to you in the video see one eighth of a circle the, the torsion of the head uh, the baby can bear then again when there is a one eighth of a circle rotation when the um, occiput comes behind the pubis the shoulders will go one eighth of a circle and the shoulders will lie in the transverse uh, no oblique, oblique, left oblique, 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 oblique diameter oblique. left oblique you can see left and right through the sac sacroiliac joint this is the left side so this is the left oblique mm -hmm. and uh, if you are talking about the right sacroiliac joint it is the right oblique um, after internal rotation comes crowning and crowning is um, basically when the baby's head is passing through the maternal pelvis uh, when the uterus starts contracting the baby's head is pushed down and when the contraction stops it kind of moves a little back but after crowning the baby's head does not move back even after the contractions have stopped so uh, this is known as crowning which is the next step of labor then comes delivery of the head by extension and that is when once you're here and crowning has occurred you will extend the head and deliver it so this is delivery of the head by extension then you know you remember the baby's head had gone a torsion of 180 degree and once the baby's out it's like oh, why have i still twisted my neck so it will passively um untwist this neck and it's known as restitution okay and this is a passive moment like the baby didn't do it intentionally nor did the birth canal made it do it it just twisted neck back because you know it was kind of twisted so you remember it was here so it twisted back and you can actually see this in the labor ward if you've been to the labor ward the restitution there's a passive movement of the head so the baby's head had uh, undergone a one-eighth of a circle uh, when the torsion is still there now the torsion it will passively move back and that you can see and that, that is, is known as restitution see this is the baby's head okay this was the starting point so these were the shoulders just imagine that so now they've come to the oblique position and now they have to come back behind the pu pubic arch to deliver you know when you're uh, doing it on a dummy pelvis make sure that the anterior shoulder comes behind the pubic arch again so you need to rotate it back one eighth of a circle to come in to the pubic arch from the oblique diameter to the anterior posterior diameter right so the baby's head will also turn once if if your shoulder is turning like this your head will also turn like this right and this is known as external rotation and it is actually visible um, in the labor ward again and this is also one eighth of a circle and that's basically it then the anterior shoulder delivers and the posterior shoulder delivers and the trunk delivers by lateral flexion and then um, the anterior shoulder is delivered there's uh, delivery of the anterior shoulder followed by the posterior shoulder and there's delivery of the trunk by lateral flexion okay now some examiners like to ask you about left occipital anterior position or some other position but the principle remains the same one eighth of a circle the baby's neck can withstand and whatever comes next comes with the rotation of the shoulders and remember our two principles which is occiput behind the pubic arch and then the anterior shoulder behind the pubic arch 
so that's your aim whenever you have a baby and a dummy pelvis with you so for left occipital anterior you will have one eighth of a circle and then the other steps are the same the in, uh, the crowning the extension and the restitution will occur because the baby is like oh, why am i still twisting my neck so restitution will occur and um you move your shoulders accordingly but over here there was no the extra one eighth due to the um movement of the shoulders okay so you have to be careful while you are answering such questions that not mention the shoulder part okay now if you start uh, if the examiner tells you you know tell me the mechanism of um, some other weird lie so say right occipital posterior so then um, you have to undergo three eighth of a circle right so one eighth will be due to um, the torsion of the neck and the rest to it will be due to the movement of the shoulders okay because the neck can't twist that much in the birth canal so when restitution will occur the one eighth will go and when you have to place the shoulders back you have to see accordingly on the dummy pelvis and the answer and i think that's all uh, i hope you uh, this video helped and i hope you rock your vivas um yeah Stay awesome.